Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. This drink is gratuitous wow. today, visually. I feel like I'm at the beach. Gorgeous. Unbelievable. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. I don't think I like the drink, George. Oh, no. But keep going. No. It's keep so going. beautiful. Well, I know. Okay, keep going. Sorry. You know, sometimes beauty is pain. I did have to just That's say what it I out loud because I'm just getting an aftertaste. I don't know how I feel about it. Well, Rachel, today we're doing a wellness check on our old friend Airbnb. You good, bro? Like, are you good? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's not just Airbnb that's really making us, you know, do the head tilt of, hmm. Huh. hmm. It's all short-term rentals and the companies associated with them. And we have questions. And, um, yeah, we are going to— I got some hot gonna, takes for you. I feel Airbnb vibes are giving me this drink vibes. Yes. Where you think, like— Oh my gosh! It looks, looks good so on good. the outside, and then I ta- and then you just have a bad taste after. But this drink that you're sipping on, Rachel, not that you care anymore. It's called <laughs> the Limelight mm. or a Limelight. Oh, yeah, it okay. just says Limelight. Uh, yeah. So we're we're going to give you the rating and reveal the cost per glass at the end of the episode. And if you so choose to be so brave, we'll give you the recipe in the show notes there as well. Yeah. Okay, so George, uh, there's a little trouble in paradise lately for. Are you talking about Bachelor in Paradise? For the, <laughs> or is that different? No, it's different. Okay. Both are just yeah. There's, well, there's a lot of. Paradise. Here's what you mean by paradise. You mean overpriced spare bedrooms and backyard sheds available for rent in foreign places, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's is that what right. you meant? Okay, listen, Airbnb. It had its 15 minutes of fame. It was like it had its moment. It was the thing. Like when this idea came to market and people trusted other people to stay in their houses and or you trusted to stay in a house you didn't know sometimes with people sometimes with people with the owner Good like caveat. it was a whole new landscape of how people viewed travel true and it was kind of beautiful at first i think i used to enjoy it and over time i think it became something that we all didn't want to exist i know okay the only time that i'm like oh no i like highly consider it and it's usually a better experience and deal is if we go to the beach with our kids and go with another family. Oh. That all together, like, it's the best way to do it. You have kitchen, you have a kitchen, you can save, you can buy groceries. And the kids, I mean, they just need Honey Nut Cheerios for breakfast, turkey sandwiches or peanut butter and jellies for, like, you know, there's just quick things you can do food-wise. And it, and if you split it, it's, it's much, I think, less expensive for the most part. Do you part. remember the last time you did an Airbnb? Can you hearken back? Um, yes. But you know what? Okay, here, I don't know what this says about me. Are you ready for this? I've never. So You've for, never booked it. No. I book VRBO. Yes. I don't do Airbnb, but they're the same thing, right? It's the same concept. Like when we're talking about this, you could interchange Airbnb and VRBO. A lot of the properties are on both websites. Okay. Just VRBO is friendlier to olds. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> old is Rachel old? <laughs> no, but she did an old person thing. Damn. It's fine. You know is that I mean? true? Here's an example. Like, I do think mo- it's called Verbo, so I think you guys are both old. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Verbo. <laughs> it's a verb. Hold it's something on. you do. Hold on. Skylar. There's no way you mashed all those letters together and created a word. It I, is VRBO. So why isn't it Airbnb? No, <laughs> I do. I thought it was called Verbo for all this time. No way, really? We Am should I ask wrong? Verbo. Hold on. Is it Verbo? It's, it's, it's Verbo. No, it's, it's Verbo. not, y'all. You're lying. <laughs> this is the moral of the story. This is a joke. I mean, it's, it's an And y'all are all <laughs> after <laughs> Rachel fell for it, now she's Vacation calling. rentals by owner. Like, you don't you say acronyms by the AKA word. They sound Verbo. YMCA. AT&T. Like, VRBO. Yumska. <laughs> well, like, I don't work I don't think you're wrong. Like, well, I think it's you can do what you want with it. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, let's get VRBO. Yes, my mother-in-law uh, two, uses two, VRBO two years ago <laughs> for that fall tells break, you anything. and we split it between four families. We got a massive house at the beach, four families split it four ways, and it's very. I mean, it's really. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's amazing. That's so. That's I how that. I look at it. Um, but if we go to a destination, if it's Winston and I, I probably won't do a. Verbo. If it's just me and Winston. <laughs> there was some hotel. condescension in that tone <laughs> that do I don't think producer Skylar appreciated. No, I I'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then if I go to like a theme thing like Disney, I kind of want to be at like a 
Disney hotel, right? Like that's fair. So there's a part of like the I'm experience. I'm not judging you. I, I want you to know that. You. Sorry, I don't. Yeah, very. I just, I just feel all that. Okay, what about you? What about you? Go. The last Airbnb that was officially oh, booked. Okay. Was a group trip with friends. In fact, uh, producer Lindsay Heatherly was there. Oh yes, yes. Uh, so it was couples, three couples, maybe four, and mm-hmm. we did like a Grand Canyon, Arizona, like hiking vibe adventure. Wow, George, are you I outdoorsy? Bought hiking pants. Are you outdoorsy? No, but the joke was that I was you're not outdoorsy. cosplaying as a. <laughs> hiker. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I bought hiking pants off Amazon that I then returned. <laughs> It's like, when am I going to ever need to look like a baby G.I. Joe again? You know what I mean? It's not a necessary. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've got hiking boots. Because, like, I don't want to slip into the Grand Canyon and die. You. That's not how I want to go. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not. Actually, that would be the most not George way to go. Yeah, like, what happened to him? Gluten? No. Grand Canyon. <laughs> Grand Canyon. <laughs> Slipped and fell. <laughs> really got Went him. Went down a trail he shouldn't have gone down. <laughs> that was our he last us it was going to be okay. All of a sudden, no. nowhere to be I'm found. I'm never the guy who's like, guys, what if we go down this unmarked trail? <laughs> It's not a very I'm like, where's thing. the can? Can we Uber eats a pizza over here? I'm <laughs> no. starving. I'm not gonna eat another granola bar. Uh, so that was the trip, Rachel. We Twice got a bar. big, like, cool cabin house that we all shared. Did you like it? It was great. They had like an arcade that had like okay, so old why school is games. It bad? Why are Why are you hating on it? Well, overall, like, I don't love the fact that I have to follow 19 instructions before we check out. Yeah. That's like, we need you to start the dishwasher, get the load of laundry going, sweep the floors. I'm like, this is a lot for me. Yeah. Too you much know, for vacation. Pick up our son from soccer practice. I'm like, this yes. is too much. It's just too much. So My mother-in-law needs to be driven to her appointment. Overall, I think in that use case, that's where I would still book an Airbnb. Yes. And it was a yes. great experience overall. Yep. But uh, I did have one terrible experience. You did. This is my fault. Picture this. Okay, go. Panama City Beach. Oh, uh, PCB. <laughs> no. <laughs> it gets worse, Rachel. It gets worse. Okay. I can't. It was was it spring break? A room that's where all the in a condo. Go? The owners were there the whole time. They live there, and we rented like one of the bedrooms. Who's we? My wife and I. You <laughs> stop it. Yeah, stop to save money because you know thirty A is wildly expensive. Sure. And uh, we didn't want to stay with the in laws. We're like, let's get you know just. Did a you place know they were going to be there? Is that very much like said? Pre, like yes. before you go. It's so like you're aware. You can get entire or you can be like a bedroom inside of the George, house. George, where so was they this were condo? Was it on the beach? I wish I could say it was, Rachel. It was on the, the PCB strip. Oh, no, George. If you know, you know. Oh. <laughs> and so and that, I don't know quite. That's when Whitney said, we work too hard to feel this broke. And so we never did it again. Oh, my gosh. We learned our wit. lesson. It was fine. We survived it. Yeah. But I don't want to hear. Tale. I don't want to hear like kids running around. Outside of the room that I'm renting. Yes. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yes. It's a very reasonable request. Again, not Airbnb's fault. I just think that should be illegal. Yeah. Well, you're. (laughs) Just abolish it. Or the, I don't know. Yeah. And listen, we know people that have like gotten out of debt. And one of the ways that they have income is they rent out. A oh, bedroom in their, room home, in their home, right? Or yeah. like, and people do it. I we had some friends that did this. That's true. Um, man, I just don't know if I trust humans enough. So when you look at it as a consumer, as a consumer, right? There's some pros and cons sure. as well. So things from a hotel. Are you ready for this bougie list? And I here's what you get when you stay at a hotel. Hit them. And I'm not mad at any of these. If we could just say that before I start listing this <laughs> off. Housekeeping. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna say this, y'all. It is there is something about when you come. Back to your room, and your bed is made. Uh, it's, it's the little things thing. in life, y'all. It's the little things. And fresh towels. And they've made they like a little— They always say, keep it green and hang your towel Oh, up. yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> new towels. It just feels so nice. I'm like, I'll use three towels in two days. Laundry. It just feels so good. I know. I hate to say That's it. That's a great one, though. Um, yeah, a pool, gym, conference rooms, restaurant, spa. So you have some it's amenities there, yep. which is great. 24-hour security. That's true. I never think about I that. I know. I don't. I, you're more secure in a hotel. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus I an Airbnb. It's like a random. I do think about this because we travel for work a lot, or we used to more back in the day. Before I had my uh, my PRK surgery, my PRK surgery. <laughs> the rest I, of I this think episode. professionally it's known as PRK. <laughs> my PRK surgery on my eyes. And I had to take off, I had to take out contact lenses and wear glasses. I would think about the storage when I was by myself in a hotel room that if something, and I've watched too many Datelines and 2020s, 
that in a hotel, if you scream loud enough, someone's going to hear and someone's going to call. Okay. So, so 24 hour security, maybe the actual, but the sharing the wall thing does feel safe to me. So what if the murderer's next door? Well, you have another wall. What if they're on both on both sides? <laughs> okay. You know, okay. what if they're in cahoots? <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Valet parking. Well, that's super bougie. Uh, concierge assistance. Complimentary oh, yeah. breakfast. Sometimes that is the best. I have trust issues with those breakfasts normally. You know what I mean? Like a yeah. mid-grade hotel. Well, I will say the the waffle mix, powdered I eggs. Don't, I don't want to be like that frou frou guy, but I'll yeah. try to stick with like the box cereal. I'll go through a Chick Fil A drive through. Right. Okay. Amen. Uh, in central location, usually hotels have a. They're great not off the location. beaten path. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Now let me cover Super. things you get from an Airbnb, VRBO, Verbo, if you will. <laughs> It's Verbo. <laughs> or other short-term <laughs> rentals. Kitchen, mm -hmm. living room, extra spaces. So mm -hmm. like you said, there's mm -hmm. more room. Multiple rooms and bathrooms for families or large parties. Yes. That's one of the big pluses we mentioned. Cozy, authentic decor. So most people want to live kind of like a local when they yeah. stare at an Airbnb. Which is totally fair. Which yeah. is fun. And I have a lot of friends that, especially if they're in the, well, you'd appreciate this, George, the baby phase or you have multiple kids, they're like, it stresses me out too much to be in a hotel with the kids, because I'm thinking, oh my God, we're making so much noise that the baby cries in the middle of the night. Like, oh, yeah. You just feel bad about the whole thing. We're yeah. a home. Well, that's the next one is privacy. No sharing walls with complete strangers. That's it. That's nice. But if you scream because you're being murdered, nobody's going to hear you. Sorry, <laughs> that's Rachel. <the> outside. <laughs> Hope Winston's with you. Uh, and then finally, located more quaint communities instead of the crowded downtown city. So if you want to get away from the central location and live like the locals, you know, it's kind of fun to be. I, I did that in Seattle once. I stayed in an Airbnb because I wanted to feel like this is how the locals That's live. That's cool, yeah. And so it was a really cool experience. That's fun. To go to like the neighborhood coffee shop and all of that stuff. Yep. So what's wild is that these became so popular that hotels and all that, they felt it. I mean, it was a it was a true, you know, the demand is up, someone else fills it. And so what hotels started to do then is actually lower their prices, which kind of sounds crazy because I just feel like hotels and everything are so expensive nowadays. Well, in Nashville especially. Yeah, but you can look on VRBO. But so if it's a popular destination like Nashville, Ver Verbo, or Airbnb. <laughs> you really ticked her off with that one, <laughs> producer <laughs> Skyler. I still just I'm just doing it. my job. I just <laughs> <laughs> I so appreciate Skyler. Uh, they really, the hotels now see them as true competition. So they do... Some hotels, you can get a room for two that now is less than an Airbnb here we in have Nashville. The, we got the deets. We're about to spill the tea on this. For a weekend in Nashville, four adults, two bedrooms, the top four choices from Airbnb averaged $114 per night. Top four choices from extended stay averaged just 90 bucks per night. Okay, I am going to kind of, but I'm going to be honest, though. The extended, a $90 a night hotel in Nashville, though, that's pretty low. It's risky. Risk, yeah, because I'm like, you're like hotels downtown. Yeah, they're going for two to four hundred a night. Do you George. have any good hotel hacks like for booking? No, do you? Kind of, yeah. Tell Should me, I? tell me, George. <laughs> George, do you have any I hacks feel like, for hotel booking? Well, honestly, like, this is a free show. I feel like I'm providing too much value by giving them my ultimate hack. Go, George. So I just booked a, a five nights in New York City. What? You didn't tell me this. Y'all are going to New York? Yes. So you know me. I'm bougie frugal. Oh. Right? Bougie frugal. 100%. <laughs> like, Kirkland King yes. meets no Airbnb. Thank you. Yeah. So here's what I did. <laughs> Priceline Express okay. allows you to get like really great deals on hotels, but you don't know what hotel you're booking. <gasps> I've heard about that. So it makes people nervous. They're like, I don't know what hotel this is. Now, they'll tell you, hey, it's a four-star hotel with these great ratings, but you don't know specifically. I knew exactly what hotel I wanted to stay at. I was like, I want to stay at the Kimpton Eventi in New York City. Okay. I use a browser extension called Travel Arrow, which sees through Priceline's <gasps> Stop it. magic cloak of invisibility and reveals exactly what hotel I'm about to book. But Priceline Express gives it to you at a steeper discount. Yeah, for sure it does. So that's what I did. Stop. I mean, one of the reasons we go for hotels, obviously New York is different, but Airbnb fees have drastically increased as the company has grown. And it, cleaning, cancellation fees, early check-in, it just feels like they're, they're nickel and diming us now. Yeah, there's a lot. It's and like a Spirit Airline flight. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, that was aggressive. Yeah, that was uh, way Airbnb too didn't aggressive. deserve that. But you have to pay for carry-ons on Spirit, right? They nickel yeah, and dime That you. is, it is. It's, it, it's true. To my credit. Yeah. And they do have stricter rules, so they are more strict on 
the number of people that can be there, even parties, right? You can't have certain a certain number of people. Yeah. So they, they're watching. They're watching. And like I mentioned, Airbnb guests are being asked to do more, like more maintenance, more cleaning before they leave. Whereas a hotel, you know, housekeeping is going to take care of things. You know, I make sure to leave it not in a I, – I, I don't know if yeah. you do this. I like pile all of my towels together yeah, in one too. cute little pile. Yeah, for and sure. Like clear the countertops. Yes, and, yes. You know, leave it better than you found it. It's what I do at restaurants too sometimes. You, you stack Get all the, the plates? plates and all this. Mm-hmm. Wow. Just to make it easy. That's a, and that's then a the, the service probably like, no, that's not how we do it. You yeah, they're probably like, we're going to have to undo all of this. Um, cool. And what's hard, too, is there's no customer service. It's basically non-existent. So if something were to happen. That's true. You're messaging one person to, yes, versus a corporate entity. Kind of figure it but all out. But also, like, just stripping the sheets and loading the dishwasher. Like, that's a pain when you're trying to travel and you're on your way out and you yep. have to do all of these things. Yep. Yep. So we, uh, yeah, we did this episode because we saw a, you know, a recent headline that said the collapse of short-term rentals in it. It really did. Caught our attention. Yeah. Because, again, when a fad happens, especially in the financial industry, and people were diving all into these customers, you know, and people that were acquiring these, uh, it seemed like the big thing to do, right? Yeah. And that it all is going to pay out. And then once everything does play out, you kind of see, okay, was it worth it or not? Well, and we've – I mean, part of this is reality. We've taken some calls on the Ramsey Show where people thought, hey, this is a brilliant business opportunity, and it becomes risky. And so we're calling uh, – people are calling this Airbnb bust. You like yes. that? <laughs> Airbnb bust. So good creativity there. There you go. So uh, do you think this is surprising or could you have predicted this with your magic wand slash eight ball? I don't know if I could have predicted this. It is interesting because I do think like – and I I can't speak specifically on like the details of this, but I do know like Nashville – tourism or like these cities that that really watch all of this they want the economics of the city to do well so if one side of it truly suffers this is corporate conspiracy theory whatever you want to do that this happens but i'm like but they do want to pull up an entity that's not doing well right they want everything to be functioning well within a city so i am kind of shocked that airbnb or these short-term rentals did so well that cities literally government they had to get involved to put limits and and to say you can't do this or this. So, I don't know. I think that's interesting. Yeah. Especially New York. New York, they have a real strict thing right now. Well, and it. there there has been a lot more horror stories that are coming out from the owner side of things that like they had to deal with oh, and yeah. then from the the tenant side of stuff they had to deal with. Well, and, when and Airbnb's customer service is, you know, there's been situations where it's been lackluster to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, and especially if it's someone's primary residence, like your home, like we say all the time here on the Ramsey show or here on Smart Money Happy Hour. It is usually your largest investment that you make in your lifetime. So I'm like, to outsource a part of that can be risky. So you just kind of have to, you have to be yeah, aware. You 100%. Have to be aware. So here's the facts, Rachel, to catch us all up to speed. Short-term rentals are now a $100 billion market that has drastically increased accessibility to global tourism. We can all agree on that. And it's founded in 2007. So that's Airbnb. It's been around now since you've been in, you left high school. What year did you graduate? Yeah, 06. I was 07. Okay. Look at that. So it started as this affordable alternative to the stuffy hotel prices. And two New York City founders put a spare room with an air mattress up for rent online after realizing hotels were sold out for a local conference. So that's how it started. Yeah. And it obviously blew up because it was a cheaper alternative in popular cities than hotels. You get that authentic stay. You get to stay in an actual like house of someone there. And full properties available for the same price as a single hotel room. So again... You're not sharing a small room and a bathroom with your two kids. Yeah. But almost 20 years later, it's now contributed to a nationwide housing crisis by allowing investors to snatch up housing in popular areas and use them for personal profit. So from the consumer side, I want to buy a house. Well, now I'm competing with these investors who are looking to make a buck from an Airbnb. Yeah. So instead of a traditional landlord investing in a residential property and just offering, again, the reasonable long-term leasing uh, in these high tourism areas, you know, it's amazing the higher fees and how much more money people can make. So the turnover is just mm. constant. So it, it is. It's affecting affecting the economy in that way. So it's just become this kind of cash grab for all these wealthy investors. Yep. And hopeful people who are like, I'm broke. Let me like make some extra money and then I don't have to work nine to five. And like, there's a lot of those situations too we've seen. So it sounds good in theory. Like we love free enterprise, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, so, but it's not so much the concept that's causing problems, but the change in the execution. So instead of traditional landlord investing in residential property with reasonable long-term leasing to permanent tenants, like we've talked about, um, Airbnb has become this trendy alternative in high tourism areas. That's usually where you see this because you can make more money with higher fees and more frequent customer turnover. Yeah. So that's what I was talking about when I was like, you can make three grand versus 1500 which one are you going to choose? Right, 100%. Yep. So well, here's what's crazy is Airbnb is worth over $77 billion. That's a lot. Which is more than Hilton and Wyndham combined. Wow. wow. It's a lot, George. It's a lot. There's a lot, a of lot complicated going on here. And there's a dynamic. lot of legislation and fights and cities fighting all of this. And there's a lot yep. of complaints about noise, security, the housing market. Um, and some hosts are complying with the new parameters and some are not. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of messy out there. It's not like the best time to be an Airbnb, regardless of what Instagram reel you saw that told you that Airbnb is the solution to all of your financial problems. That's right. As a lot of complicated dynamics there with that short-term rental. But listen, our goal is to remind you what this means for your money. What does it mean? Yes, yeah, so whether you're a consumer in the marketplace and you're trying to say, should I book a hotel? Should I book an Airbnb? Or maybe you're in a place that to invest in real estate. Maybe you are to the point that you've, you know, we've talked to people in Baby Step 7, that they're funding their retirement, they've paid off their like, house. I've got like, plenty of money. What do I do? What should I do next, you know? So it's a it's a real question. What's your take on when and if you should get involved with Airbnb as an investment? Oh, gosh. I'm, uh, I mean, it's probably similar to any investment property. Yeah, I just would, I mean, after this whole episode, I'm like, it's, I would still be leery to put my money in something in that. I would. Okay. So like you'd prefer for me, I would rather you just. Tenant. I would rather have more control. I think, whether it being a property that I keep long term and have you know a year long renter in there. Well, I I think if you're going to get into this, whether it's long term tenant or short term rental, pay cash for the property, which is yes. counter cultural advice right. in today's world. But most people doing Airbnb, and I think Start I say that with confidence because of that, they'll just jump in with little money down, just trying to get that property. And they're yes. hoping to make enough from the Airbnb after fees to then cover the mortgage. And that becomes a stressful game to play, especially people are, have full-time jobs and they're doing this on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, the real estate game, George, like, and we see this on, I see it on Instagram reels. You see it on TikTok. So thank you. I just see it three weeks earlier. It's I, fine. It is true. <laughs> but I, it's like, I watch some of these because they come up for me and I watch them and I'm like, man, if I didn't have knowledge, experience, whatever it is under my belt, that sounds really prideful. I don't mean it's not that prideful, but I, I can see through this stuff. But when you just consume it in 90 seconds, it's like, well, holy well, there's crap. There's It's should, just fear of missing well, out. Well, it's like, holy crap. I, of course, why would I not? Like they make it seem so easy, right? And you don't understand the risk. You don't understand what's going on. So to go slow in it and to get a condo that you go and retile yourself and kind of figure out, you know what I mean? Like you go and redo to get it cheaper and you start that way and you start small, not a single family home and you're just diving right in when you don't have yeah. the money. Like you just put so much risk on your plate. And I'm like, ha, yeah, it's well, just not worth it. Well, all of these people posting about it, because that's usually how people find out about it and get excited. They saw some Instagram reel and you go, what is this person's motive, invested interest behind posting this? Usually there's some Airbnb co course they want you to buy in order to learn how to invest like the wealthy. And they never post about the horror stories that they've had to deal with sure. and the money they've lost. And it's all just kind of this nasty grifting yeah. happening in that world. And it's not just like, oh, he you know, something flippant. This is a lot of money for a lot of people. So it is, it's pretty serious, but yeah. people just kind of seem like well, they Well, and don't think that all wealthy people do this. It's totally fine to just invest in a 401k and IRAs and taxable brokerage accounts. You never have to become a real estate mogul to make good money. Right, right. Your investments can make just as good money with a lot less risk. Yeah, yeah. If you just look at the long-term track record of the stock market. So, that's how I personally go. You mm -hmm. know, I don't get into all the fancy newfangled. Maybe one day I'll own a rental property, but yeah. I'm going to do it with peace and patience and pay cash for it. Yes. And not just fall for some Instagram trend. I know. For sure, George. Well, here's to Verbo. Here's to Airbnb and Verbio. <laughs> Verbio. Who's or Verbio. Verbo. Yeah. And Verbo. if you want to book an Airbnb, <laughs> go for it. But, you know, know what yeah. you're getting into. I, see, I probably will in the future with... With friends and kids and all of it. I'm not against it. And if but it's a cheaper option that's better, I'm still going to go for that. Sure. But again, but, when I want convenience. But a great hotel. You just, man. 
Man. I can just call and be just like, hello, can, can I, can you come change the sheets for me? Thank you. Just kidding. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> it is just something. It's wonderful. It is. It's just something. Okay, but so. But don't let us keep you from traveling. <laughs> But right. also um, budget for travel. That's a big thing we didn't talk about. People are paying for this on the credit card. They're hoping to get reward points. Just budget for it and create a sinking fund. Can you tell people what the sinking fund is yes. and how to use that? Yeah. So you just figure out, okay, hey, I'm going to go travel in July and it's January. So we have you know, seven months, six months to save up for this. But here's the thing with sinking funds. You have to remember that especially with travel, this is the biggest thing. You have to buy airline tickets before the actual date usually book the hotel with some kind of deposit before the actual date. So True. those expenses are going to be spread throughout those months. So just be aware of them. You just got to track it and know, know what you're getting into. I do like sometimes I book with like a hotels.com and they allow you to pay upon arrival, which is great when you're still budgeting for Not it. Not even with a deposit? No. Oh, wow. So you can just book it and you can cancel up to, you know, two days in advance sure, or something. Sure, sure, sure. This feels like great ads for all these companies, but I really just... <laughs> It can be nice when you book with those options. <laughs> yep, for sure. And so that's something to think about as you create those sinking funds. Well, but George, yeah. I hope you have so much fun in New York. Thank you. Well, it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Skylar, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. So, Skylar. And if we're not guilty, Skylar has to take a drink. Oh, there oh. you go. And so today's question is... Have you ever pretended to be asleep to avoid a conversation with your seatmate on a long flight? Oh, man. That's a good one. Yes, I'm guilty. I don't know that I have a specific story because it's been a while. Usually I sit next to my wife and I feel like I'd be in a big fight if I pretended to be asleep while she was trying to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> but... I've had those really chatty seatmates. Ooh. And you know, as soon as they are ready, <laughs> as soon as like, is that seat available? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm in for it. Like, you can just tell. <laughs> See, they have I, a I put in AirPods. There's yes. some times where I'm, here's here's my favorite convos on planes. Is it if, legitimately? Is if the plane is like bad turbulence, we're supposed to land, you go down for the land, they pull up, like something happens with the flight. That's when I'm out and I'm chatting. And I'm like, have you seen that? To what distract are we yourself. Playing? Maybe, but I'm like, I need to get everybody's thoughts because we were on a flight and we are flying, George. This is a this is a veteran flight person that flies a lot. Is that what they call them? I don't know. Veteran I just flight feel like people? this is it. And our plane well, is going. We just call them frequent and flyers? we're going straight. We're going from Nashville to Houston. All of a sudden, and you feel the whole plane shift. And I'm like, what the? What is happening? Why are we turning? Nobody else. Winston's like this. <laughs> Open mouth breathing, sleeping. He's a mouth breather? Everybody. Oh, on planes. Oh, he's out before we taxi. He is wow. asleep with the white noise. It's his favorite thing. I can't sleep on planes. And I am looking around. And we have, we have done a complete uh, 180. And we're heading back. And I open up my Southwest app. Can you watch the map? Yeah. We're flying back. And I'm like, oh. And no one said anything. No. Over and I am this, y'all. I'm like a prairie dog. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> and he's in, nobody. And everyone is just. Not aware. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like code red. Like, what is happening? I get up. <laughs> I get up and go to the flight attendant. I'm like, hey. <laughs> I saw that we've turned around and we're going back to Houston. Everything okay? <laughs> she says, hmm, we're going to make an announcement soon. But the air conditioning is out and the, F F the FAA. Yep. The well, not allowed. The fa. <laughs> <laughs> the real name. You get it wrong every time. Yeah. So. Well, not allow a whatever, whatever, whatever. We had a land in Corpus Christi. Like all, the, I had all the info before I went back to my seat. I got it all, <laughs> and nobody is asking or looking around. So I don't talk to people unless something is happening with the plane, and I'm the first to alert everybody. Wow. <laughs> I'm very aware. Yes. So anyways, that's my story. That's a great story. Yep. Nobody knew. I had to hop over Winston. <laughs> he was in the aisle. And he didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Climbed over him. Get back to the are you? Attendance. You're a uh, middle or are you in a uh, window? I'm usually in aisle if I'm by myself. Because of our bladders. Bladders. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it is Listen. so true. Man, when you have to wake a sleeping stranger. Oh, it's the it's worst. It's the worst. What's thought, your record for a flight most times going to the bathroom? Three to four. I got five. You got five? I got five. To where? I think it was Vegas. 
Wow. Oh I think it was a three hour. What? Oh <laughs> yeah. I think you hey, should go I'm, to a doctor. I'm the, sa- I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same way. But you know what? You get like dehydrated on planes. It's all of it. I think George. this was like my, like, I'm going to drink a liquid IV. I'm going to chug some cold brew. I'm going to be alert. I'm all of it. Hydrated. Yeah. And then it just hits. I'm tell I am the s- I'm the oh same way. It it is it's real. Okay, it's real. Glad someone can relate. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So anyways, I, I don't. Yeah. I, we'll I put tr- AirPods in, and yeah. then the other worst person to sit next to, because the first one's me. Obviously, I'm very aware of everything that's happening. <laughs> You're considering yourself the can worst person this? to sit next to. Oh no. The person no. with a subway sandwich is number one on my list of worst oh people gosh, to sit next any to. Any hot food, you can't do it. Number one rule on airlines. For some reason, they bring subway in Wendy's. I'm like, plane? you can't eat the Wendy's chicken sandwich next to me. Like it smells up the whole plane. Yeah. Well, what I realized is don't read a book. Because you know what makes me really annoyed when people are they're uh, peering over at your book, going like, "What are you reading?" Okay, I d- and then they start reading with me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and they're like, "I'm not done. Can you go back?" No, I'm like, "No, no, 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 George, no. that's yeah, never happened." Yes, they want to talk to me about the page. I'm, I'm like, "Hey." I no, will say I was like, if this I have is a just fellow, for me. If I have a fellow reader that knows the book, I do appreciate like a book combo. Well, now what I start doing, <laughs> I'm going to start doing is just read my own book on the plane. That way if they want to talk <laughs> about it, I'm evangelizing my own content. Oh my gosh, this has gone off the rails. I think yeah. we're guilty, guilty on so many fronts. Yeah, you guys are totally God guilty. Bless. We need to do a whole episode. Don't sit next to but you know what? To be airline. fair, I've been on flights with you where you're recognized and you're very gracious about it. Oh, uh, yeah, that I'm doesn't not. bother and me. And I'm like, smart money, happy hour co-host? And they're like, sir, <laughs> sir, please get back in your seat, sir. No, I do. I, I I, love it. Maybe for the ego. I hope it's not the ego. But I do love to know, like, oh, my gosh, you're the person listening. Because we do this show, and we talk into a microphone. We look into a camera. We help people are out there. You don't know who they are. So when you put a face with, like, a listener, yeah. it's like, oh, my gosh, you're the one listening. <laughs> I'm so glad you're there. It's you. It's you. That's who we do this So for. I do. And to hear their stories. What a great way to good. wrap this episode. I know. Okay. <laughs> well, who, who's – you may have finished almost first. I'm closer to yeah. the end. Yeah. Okay. What, right. what do you rate it? Um, okay. So this was called The Limelight. I'm going to rate this a 5 out of 10. Yeah. I think mm. it has potential. But it's got a real. Like, I just went and order at a restaurant. So I don't know if it's like thing. a lemongrass vibe. That something's that really turning me off. Feels like someone mowed the lawn and got some clippings in here. It's too earthy. It's earthy mm-hmm. in the wrong way. It needs a little more sweet, and mm-hmm. I think the the bitters or something in there are really taking away from it. So I'm going to give it five out of ten. I'll go six out of ten. All right. The presentation was ten out of ten. That presentation was wonderful. Presentation Maybe that's eleven what it was, out of ten. Expectations, just yeah. like us yes. in our world today. Expectations high. One hundred percent. Execution. Here's yeah. what's in the limelight. If you're guessing lime, you're partially right. It's got bourbon, simple syrup, lime juice, pineapple juice, Campari, and orange bitters. Man, you would think that's good. That's like a good ingredient I list. think the bitterness of the Campari has taken away from it. I think there's maybe Whoa, too much Campari. Whoa, and it's expensive, George. And here's the cost breakdown. <laughs> Breathe, Rachel. She spends four what times this say? on a drink in Nashville and doesn't blink an eye. But for some reason during Smart Money Happy Hour for a drink she didn't pay for, she's shocked at the <laughs> it's price. It's very expensive. It's $4.26 a glass. <laughs> That's a lot to make at home. We make some cocktails here on the show that are like well, $2. Well, pineapple juice... That's a bougie juice, you know, as far as juices go. <laughs> you got the bottom of the barrel. You got apple, orange. <laughs> pineapple juice is up here. How about cranberry? What's cranberry? Oh, cranberry, bottom of the barrel. <laughs> really? You got a bottle of ocean spray for like, <laughs> they'll pay you to take that off their hands. But like pomegranate juice, uh, that'll yeah. cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, it's, okay, okay, I didn't even think about and that. And I think high quality <laughs> pineapple juice, what is, which is what we use on this show, that's what we use here. <laughs> so 426, sweet. find the recipe in the show notes. Give it a try this weekend. Maybe you can do better and let us know how we can make this drink a 10 out of 10. For sure, yep. And if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a review. Do it if you're bad. Let us know what you think. <laughs> Subscribe, share it with your friends and family to spread the word. Because, Love seeing the Instagram stories. Oh, yeah. Every Thursday, there's a new episode of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. 